Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. What's going on, Brian? All's well, Pablo. How are things at your end? Hopefully not uh, too snowy or too cold. Man, the snow is ridiculous. I did what I can. The backyard is, is, is crazy. I haven't gotten a chance to get back there, and I tried today, but the snow is, like, almost melting, and it's just too heavy, so I'm like... <laughs> we just let it be. I'm gonna just let it be. We just can't go back there. Um, a lot of news. A lot. Of, first of all, before we begin, I want to give uh, thanks to all those people who uh, who have liked the show uh, and have viewed the show, and want to just encourage everyone to hit that like button because it really does help out the channel. And we thank you for your continued support. Now, let's get into Wandavision. Episode five, the train keeps going stronger. From the onset, you know, I was, I, I, it didn't bother me too much now that, you know, we're moving on and, you know, we got the family ties sort of full house sort of intro. I was like, okay, this is, this is cute. But things happening in the show are becoming more apparent. Um, there isn't a long, uh, frame of time where they're just doing their whole show thing and things are getting disrupted quicker. We're learning about things much faster. And, uh, I was very, very, I tried to stay away as much as I possibly could from the social media. And I saw some stuff that got me upset, but I, I just tried to ignore it. But I enjoyed the show very much. I don't know if you want to skip towards the, the reveal that we got at the end. I want to discuss that part. Do you want to just say your part in terms of how you think the show is going so far? A couple of notes. I'm happy to start wherever you want um, because it's it's a brave it's a brave new world, and we're finally really starting to see that expanded. But I have a couple of notes that I had. So one is similar to you. I really like this format of inside the alternate reality and then outside. I like how we're now kind of moving in parallel paths on that, and then it mm -hmm. kind of intersects at points in the show. I think it really helps the pace. Um, so that was really neat to neat to see. I was also excited to see the Catherine Hahn character, the Agnes neighbor, who we suspect is a villain, really starting to get positioned throughout this episode oh, yeah. in suspicious ways, right? Like they did it kind of like comic relief, but you could tell she was everywhere. Everywhere where something weird was happening, she was there. Yeah. So I feel like we're getting, we're getting teed up for something, you know, we think it's Ag Agatha Harkness from the comics. That's what we think that character is, but we're really now being pointed to focus on this individual. She's up to something. Um, and so I like, I like that aspect of it. Um, Spoiler I warning, everybody. We're going to be spoiling it. So if you haven't watched the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, okay. yeah okay. go ahead. Yeah. I think the second one, which you know, we can discuss this first. We can do the end first. But I really liked the way that Captain Marvel was dropped into this episode. Oh, yeah. I was a big fan of the fact that they really portrayed it as, okay, Maria Rambo has a problem. Has, she yeah. has owns the pick with this character, which means either that's something we deal with in Captain Marvel 2, which I'm already yeah. interested in because we have been teased that her mother has passed away from cancer already. So there's a lot there to unpack. Yeah. Or, and I did want to get your take on this, is like where would you place the odds that we get a Captain Marvel appearance in this show at any point in time that's been kept under wraps because the character was very conspicuously name dropped, you know, in a way that no other Avenger was 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 mentioned um, by name. So I think that was also notable, and yeah. so I, I flagged it in my notes for just like, is how is this going to be handled? Anyway, really like that. And then obviously the two, the two big threads that were dropped, one much more subtle than the other, but the, the aerospace engineer, that's number one. Yeah. And then number two was the obvious at the end, which was the, the, Evan, the Evan Peters appearance. So I don't know, you take it from there. What do you, what do you want to unpack first? I think those are the main things. 
the Captain Marvel 2 uh, certainly it sets up that story and how we're going to address that uh, in, in Captain Marvel 2. Certainly, we're going to probably see some stuff about Photon in that movie, hopefully. Um, they have been making mentions of a Luke Skywalker sort of cameo in the film. I doubt that it was um, Evan Peters' appearance no. in there. Um, that's something that we already sort of knew because um, I think even before the, the, the show came out, there were reports of him being on set. And, and right. so this was just he, it. He's also not Luke Skywalker. I, yeah. I'll do respect to his yeah, part, yeah. which was amazing. That's, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's disrespect. That's why, that's why whoever, I, I think it was uh, Juan, um, Olsen, what was her name? Yeah. Elizabeth Olsen is the one who Elizabeth said Olsen it. said that there's gonna, there's gonna be a Luke Skywalker appearance. Not a Luke Skywalker appearance, a Luke Skywalker-like, um, a cameo. Uh, and, and I can't think of any character that can pop up that will be as, um, that will cause that same effect as when we saw Luke Skywalker in The Mandalorian. I don't, I, I, can't, I just can't see it. Cause the only cameos that I see that will, that'll probably be dope would, would be Dr. Strange himself. But that's been confirmed. Yes. So that's not a, that would not be, she's saying it's been kept under wraps. So it can't be him. I I, I just and can't. He's not, big, he's not big enough either. All due respect to Dr. Exactly, Strange, exactly. So I, I, I'm trying to understand what is, she, hopefully she didn't hype it up too much and people are disappointed, but we'll see. Well, can we go with this? Who 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 fits that cat? So let's assume for a second, because Elizabeth Olsen's not a dummy. Like she's gonna yeah. say, if she knows that she's gonna put that out there, that's gonna get people talking. So who actually would qualify as a Luke Skywalker level cameo from the MCU? By definition, that would be a cat that would be, have to be someone we have seen before. Couldn't be a new actor, but it would have to be an AA list character. So who qualifies for that? To me, it would have to be an X-Men. Possibly. I, I just don't see anyone else appearing that would, again, because when Luke Sky, Skywalker showed up in The Mandalorian, everybody was, that's the, that was a talk of the town for the next few days. I don't think of or I don't I, I just can't imagine anyone who can cause that same effect but if there was it would have to be someone like professor Tony, well Tony Stark would be the old line Robert Downey Jr. would be the on the Avengers side he would be the only one that I would put at that level like in a in the like from it makes no sense, right? I'm just saying. Yeah, like, that's what I'm. Yeah, that's what, what, what I'm actor, what character would you say if he showed up unannounced and completely undetected would draw that kind of reaction? He clearly would qualify. I just can't make wrap my head around that as a possibility. Because um, like, even like Thor, Captain America, like nah, nobody, no, nobody, no, they're not at that level. They're not at the yeah. Luke level. A Professor X cameo would be. But okay, so to that point, I actually have a thing on that point. So Patrick Stewart gave an interview recently where he said he met with Kevin Feige. They went through an exercise mapping out the character in this. And Patrick Stewart said he passed. He said he was not willing to come back and do it again. So he ruled himself out. So Ian McKellen, would that qualify as Magneto, as the dad? Because well, I don't think the Fazbender. Do you think the Fazbender Magneto? Because we we can get into it. But that universe has been opened. Would the Fazbender Magneto draw that big of a reaction? Maybe that would draw that big of a reaction. I think so he because made? Fazbender was perfect. And he was. And he's a big name. Maybe he. So okay. So what? So if it's one of those two, would that be? I mean, that probably would get the reaction that nobody's talked about. Yeah. And yeah. Magneto does have connections to the Maximals. Because, I mean, if that is the case, then you can so certainly uh, dive a little bit deeper as to what really did happen with Wanda and um, Quicksilver's uh, uh, parents, right? Right. That'll be interesting. I couldn't think, because like, I was trying to think, like, you know, Sam Jackson, Nick Fury, like, the actor's the big enough, but I don't think the character's big enough. That's not a Luke-style character. Yeah. This has to be a main character. Yeah. 
I just don't. I just don't. I, the only ones I get again will be those two. Okay. A Magneto would definitely cause a big stir. Definitely. The door is open for that. Yeah. The door is open right now. I mean, <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't be totally out of left field if he showed up now. Nah. No, nah, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. Um, but let's see. Let's see what let's see what yeah, happens at the end of this. Um well, of course we're gonna see Doctor Strange. Um I'm looking forward to seeing the next episode to see how involved uh, or what because when he showed up, and we're talking about Quicksilver. When he showed up, she wasn't she was surprised. So obviously it certainly um um takes us back to the conversation that we had prior um in in previous shows about there's other people involved that are helping her in this world or reality that she's built for for herself so it, again mephisto is definitely I, I'm, I'm very interested it, let, we don't know if he may be mephisto because people were talking about um evan peters being mephisto so we don't know yet everything um, about this episode was was built around this idea of we're going to label wanda as the architect of all this but everything okay. lines up with she's not in total control okay. right? everything about from the from the the co-worker that vision kind of tapped into from the footage of her breaking in, which I thought was very suspicious, like who mm -hmm. sent her there, who gave her the intel, there's clearly yeah. someone else behind that. Yeah. Even to her like coming out of the bubble to like, you know, threaten the guy, everything was like, hey, look at Wanda, she's the one to blame. And, and at the same time, then at the end, she's like, well, I'm not the one who made the door knock. Like, yeah. and then she genuinely was surprised when Twix exactly. was Everything points to there's, there's one other, at least one other player here that, is maybe it's Catherine Hahn, maybe it's someone else who has to be revealed. Yeah, is that, that definitely they're building this up very, very well. Uh, um, was there what, anything? What was your reaction? What was your reaction to seeing Evan Peters back as Quicksilver and that cro and the and the choice, right? The choice to not so hit. As Kat Dennings very kind of broke the fourth wall to be like, wait, she recast Peter. <laughs> that was an epic, hilarious line. You know, your reaction to, to choosing to bridge the universes of the 20th century Fox X Men to this universe with that. I would still, because I would say this. Although visually we recognize him as Quicksilver in the Fox world, his. Um, the way he spoke, it just, he just, I don't know. He just, he, it just didn't feel like he was the Quicksilver of the Fox world. So I'm not sure about that yet. We'll definitely have to wait and see how that goes in the next episode. And, you know, he just didn't feel like the, that character in the Fox universe. He just looked, he just got recast and is Evan Peters. And we don't know if he's quicks, we don't know anything. We just know that this is not um, the Quicksilver from the the MCU, but from the Fox. I, I I got it. Just would seem odd though. Like you, they could have hired anyone to do that role. True. And to choose him, either that's a tremendous bait and switch with the audience. But all of us are going to look at that and say, "Wait, you just built a bridge to the." Yeah. James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, Jennifer yeah. Lawrence world. Yeah. And I guess if we assume that's what they intended to do, if we assume that's a face value move, whether or not Evan Peters is what he, you know, whether he really is Quicksilver or not, having that actor and opening that, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about having that group of characters kind of brought back to life? in the MCU versus starting over and building a new universe X I haven't really thought it past, I haven't really thought past this moment. I am, I didn't have too strong feelings towards it because I don't know where they're going with this just yet. Uh, I don't want to speculate that this, they're bringing in the X-Men from the Fox universe into this world 
because I wouldn't want to see that. I want them to start over. I think they need to start over. Do you um, want them to fully start over or do you want them to borrow the James Gunn playbook of, hey, I'm going to take a few that I thought worked and take a few that I thought didn't in Suicide. Like if they kept Fassbender as Magneto and recast McAvoy, like just as an example, like how would you yeah. feel about that idea of mixed and match? I guess I wouldn't mind it. Um... I, in the even in the beginning when we thought okay now MCU has um these characters back I've always said in the past that I wouldn't mind James McAvoy being Professor X I thought he was fantastic I thought fat, fast bender others they need to be recast Quicksilver was was dope I don't know enough yet to have strong feelings towards it I think if, if if they brought back the right characters, I'd be fine with it. Mm. But certain characters need to be replaced. And people are gonna go crazy. Oh, Hugh Jackman was yeah, but Hugh Jackman is like 60. Is is over. I'm sure I'm certain they're gonna give him a cameo. In some oh, by the way, mm -hmm. to our prior discussion, he would qualify as the Luke Skywalker level cameo. And I don't know what oh, he yeah. does. I don't know how he belongs in this show, but he exactly. we forgot him. He would actually qualify. Oh yeah, if, yeah, we we just don't know if it would make sense, but let's see, let's see, let's see what happens yeah. with the show. Let's see what happens. Um, was there anything else about the show that that uh, had you like looking forward to next week? I think just the idea of I thought that the other thing that was really I thought fun to watch was Vision starting to lose faith and question the world around him. I actually liked where they're going with this, of putting the two of them kind of more in conflict with each other. Yes. yes. Um, I, I, and Paul Bettany, I thought, did a really good job of sort of having that range of emotions, which I thought we've never, that character's never really had, quite honestly. So I, I liked where they're going with that. I'm, right now, I'm a fan of like the, the threads they're opening up. And maybe, you know, I think next week feels like, I don't know when the Halloween party is, but it feels I think like it's next week. close. It is next week, right? I believe so. Okay. I think he is going to explore a little bit more in this one. Vision. Uh, he's definitely going to... Um, because there, there's, a, there's a moment, if you've seen some of the, the the trailers and some of the scenes that they've shown where he flies off and he's looking, mm -hmm. I guess, at the town. He's definitely going to do some investigating. It's, it's, I, I'm, I'm wondering, like... Because Wanda had to reanimate it somehow. She has to have some control over him, right? Mm-hmm. And for him to discover or look more into what's going on, I would I would assume that she would know some of it. I, I'm trying to understand how that works, you know, because he was dead. He was yeah. dead for it. She just I, I don't I don't know how that works. That's what I'm curious about the most. I had one other quick note, which I thought Marvel. <laughs> I think this is where Marvel listens to the fans and the questions. This is the first time I've ever heard someone break down the relative strength of the Avengers when um, Randall Park, so Jimmy Woo, was kind of going through that basically Scarlet Witch and, and Captain Marvel are like up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody yeah. else is really at that level. I, I thought that was actually like finally someone acknowledged yeah. that <laughs> the characters are not comparable. Like it's great yeah. that Cap is got the shield and all that, but like he's not even close to the, the level of power of some of these, you know, so that was the first time a, a, an in-show character kind of broke down like, hey, like she would have killed Thanos except he launched the Blitz, which was an yeah, interesting yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, So yeah, I thought that was actually a neat moment of like, all right, they're aware of this issue, which is the power issue and how to, yeah. you know, start I think to deal with that. Marvel does a great job in sort of knowing what the fans are, are asking and what they, you know, they're asking some questions like, what's the hexagon? What's this and what's that? They're answering those questions because then they themselves are trying to figure those things out as well. So it's cool to be on the same page sort of and all, and all of us discovering it almost at the same time. So uh, yeah, Marvel, Marvel is back to its form, man. They're doing yeah. a fantastic job with this show so, um, thus far. We forgot from the WandaVision. Can we talk about the aerospace engineer? We forgot. Oh, big one. The aerospace engineer. There have been names thrown out there like Bashir. There's only I one that we care about. Come on. There's only one that matters. Who? Reed Richards. That's the only one. 
You think? Uh, no, I'm just saying, we, the other ones that have been thrown about are nice. Like they've mentioned roads and all sorts of, but I'm saying the one that's juicy and fun to think about is Reed Richards. But does Reed Richards even exist? In I mean, is, is, is he in the quantum realm still? Because I believe that's where they are located currently. The Fantastic Four. I believe that's where they're still located. Okay. Because again, we have to ask the question, all this going on and you're not around, the Fantastic Four is not around, Reed Richards didn't offer help. Where were you when this was happening? Now there was a reference in the WandaVision earlier to the to the, something about the astronaut program. Remember, there was like a disruption to the astronaut program, which I think people are maybe starting to connect that little story from the sword director yeah. to this comment and saying, was that a reference to whatever program the Fantastic Four was a part of? So could they be could they be trapped in space, maybe if they're not trapped in, in the quantum realm? Because I agree with you they clearly would not be laying low for the last 10 years. So something must have happened to them. Yeah. Um, but I, to me, Rhodey doesn't measure up to aerospace engineer. Nobody's ever referred to him as that. And there's never been another character in this show that we would call an aerospace engineer. Never been referred to. As, or, sorry, not in the show. I mean, in the MCU arc. Mm, They've not yeah, had another yeah, yeah. character. Mm -hmm. So it's fun, <clears throat> but I don't know. The person, the person that, the one name that was thrown out there was Adam Brashear. Okay. Uh, that would be interesting because if, hey, if that happens, I'm gonna go crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna go crazy, man. I'm gonna go crazy. Cause to have Ruth Marvel on, on, on the show and then possibly do a movie of him back in the day, that would be very, very, very exciting for me to see. All right, man. Let us know what you think in the comment section below about what this episode meant to you, what you discovered, what you liked, what you didn't like. Let us know in the comment section below. And who you think the Luke Skywalker cameo is, yes. if it's not anyone who's been mentioned. I'd be curious if anyone else has ideas or things they, that would fire them up to see. Yeah, I, I'm interested in knowing that because again, if she said that and is and I was hyped, and if it's somebody like Doctor Strange, which we we already knew, then it's like we already knew this. This is not the Luke Skywalker type character that people were expecting. Um, Blade, they have found their writer. She wrote on the show. The Watchmen, which was fantastic uh, on HBO. I thought it was fantastic. A lot of people thought it was fantastic. Um, Stacey osei Kafour, mm -hmm. I believe her name is. Um, now, we have the lead. We have the writer. Now they're looking most likely for the director. Um, how far along do you think they are and when do you think we'll get a blade announcement <clears throat> good question i would guess if you've got a writer hired if you can get a director hired let's call it by the middle of this year i would say they could be shooting by early next year that would be my guess give the writer a year's head start get main cast in place shoot in early 2022 and maybe the maybe the show is online by like yeah. 2023 that would, or the movie or, or how they're how they're going to do it um it's interesting to see so i agree with you so watchmen was one of the more acclaimed superhero genre shows that we've gotten in the last 10 years and now we've already seen the mcu and disney picking the cinematographer to do moon knight and the writer to do blade so you're seeing kind of that that work translating to hey you did good work on that we want you over here so. yeah yeah i'm looking forward to see how this uh, uh um, moves along uh because i'm still i want to say on a scale to from one to ten I, I i wouldn't say that i'm at a nine or eight in terms of concern with this movie i'm probably halfway like five or six because i don't know 
how this will translate him being Blade. Are we going to get too many comparisons to Wesley Snipes? If we do, that may be a problem. I don't know, because Wesley Snipes obviously set the bar with Blade. You know, he, he pretty much started this whole thing. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how um, how that goes. When this was announced, I said to myself, I should speak more openly about this stuff because after the movie Blade, uh, not movie, uh, not not Blade, uh, Black Panther came out, I was like, damn, it would, it would be dope if they did a Wakanda series, right? And I thought this a while ago and it's happening. And as I thought about it just recently, I was like, could this be the opportunity to introduce or to speak of a Black Panther who isn't Ch Chadwick in this show? Does Black Panther show up in this show? And we don't know who it is. And we'll be probably introduced to it in a movie. Not 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 um, um Black Panther 2, but after that. This is interesting to me. What do you think? A couple of points on this. So number one, this is the latest in a trend that I want to talk about. But I, I think you hit on a key point, which is there was nothing about the timeline of this show, which means it's all open. Honestly, if they wanted to go back and make, they could do the T'Chaka era. Yeah. That would be completely legitimate and within the realm of possibility. They could explore some of the things we saw in the opening of Black Panther when they were in Oakland and sort of the, what was it, you know, 30 yeah. years ago. Yeah. That could almost be its own show if you yeah. wanted to blow that up. So it was very conspicuous that this was very open ended. This is like Ryan Kugler's playground and, you know, he can go anywhere with this world. And I think it takes the idea of Black Panther 2 and kind of expands it into, okay, you've got, it's world building. That's really what the movie and the show are about. The trend that I see continuing, which I think is notable here, is I remember um, last year, I think I mentioned this, the, one of the bigger surprises was this Barry Jenkins Lion King movie that got announced. It made, yeah. on the surface, no sense, right? A guy who's directing incredibly serious, critically acclaimed affair like Moonlight, Beale Street, and now he wants to do a prequel to The Lion King. Like, I don't get from point A to point B. Yeah. But what came out was he said it was directly as a result of the conversation he had with Chloe Zhao about her experience on Eternals. Chloe Zhao, also an indie filmmaker, who said, basically, I was allowed to make my movie. Like, Mar they got out of my way. I was allowed to make my movie. So then Barry Jenkins said, well, my dream was always to make a Lion King movie. And now I have, if I have the freedom, I'm going to go do it. And now you have... You know, they were in business with Ryan Cooler for Black Panther, but you can tell right now, giving him the keys and the freedom to say, go, go expand and explore. And so I think that's the right approach is Marvel built their franchise and maybe now giving a little more freedom to people who have proven that they can make the kind of movies that they want to see made, or Disney in general, not just Marvel, I should say, because Lion King obviously a different world. But so I think that's a trend. I think you see that with three or four filmmakers now on their side. And that has me really excited because I think we've talked about in the past, like the Marvel formula is great, but if they want to be great for the next 10 years, they've got to find new ways to build on that. And I think this is a very logical and sensible way to do that. I'm super excited, super excited to see this added to the lineup. It also presents an opportunity for Killmonger to come back. Well, for sure. And it under those circumstances i'm i'm cool with it um anything after that I, i'm like but he's dead you know it's like death doesn't mean anything if you keep you keep bringing characters back right <laughs> depending on what's how it how it happens so i'm very excited for this uh because we don't know what we may see if they do a a, a that Black Panther, Captain America fight scene where Black Panther beats him up. I'm there to see that too. <laughs> so yeah, man, I don't know if you ever saw the Black Panther, um, the cartoon. No, I have not. You should check it out. I don't know where it's playing. You, you'd have to probably search for it, but there was uh, an episode 
where Captain America is sent into Wakanda and Black Panther, they, they fight and Black Panther beats him up, you know, and, and it was a dope scene. It was a dope scene. It was a, it was a good show. It was a little bit too, I like the animation too much, but on, on the, besides that, I like the, the dialogue and, and, and the theme of the, of the, of the show. It was dope. It was dope. So we get to see a live action version of it. And I'm, excited to see if that opportunity presents itself where they can do um a black panther that's in the present that is not that's still t'challa but we don't know who the, the yeah, black panther is i was going to say when, when, when i think about shows you know like i know like amazon's working on a lord of the rings show and you know the hbo is working on game of thrones shows and that sort of thing but i think this lends itself better to what they're trying to do for the simple reason that they the comic book version and the movie version of Wakanda is this idea of a world within a world right this hidden world that exists within the earth which means it's kind of timeless yeah. you can explore the interaction of Wakanda with any point in history almost the way that Umbrella Academy jumped around from future to yes. past it's interesting if you want to say, hey, look, let's look at what Wakanda was doing in World War One or the American Revolution, or let's go forward to the 24th century. You can do that and create an interesting story. And the comics have already kind of dealt with that. So as I said, uniquely set up, I think, for this to work well. Yeah. So let us know what you think about um, the possibilities of Ryan Coogler's Wakanda series on Disney+. Plus. They're endless, um, but what would you like to see on in that show? Uh, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Tom Holland. When Tom Holland speaks, we listen extra closely <laughs> given his history. <laughs> We're listening to see what he is gonna what he's gonna spoil. <laughs> um, he says something, you know, that sort of it, it, again. If you want to know what we, we said about Spider Man Three. Look at our previous show. I'll probably leave a, 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 a link um, probably in the top right so that you can click on that and see what we said about Spider-Man 3. But he says New Spidey is uh, super ambitious. That scares me. That scares me. I thought I, it would. Huh? I thought it would when I read the article. I was like, he's going to be, Pablo's going to be worried now. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, oh man, because Again, and I don't want to keep saying the same thing over and over again, but just so that we're clear, there is a lot to that Spider-Verse situation. And we probably only have about, I would say, two and a half hours the most. How can you do it all in one film and make it dope? You can't compare it to Endgame. You can't compare it to Infinity War. All that stuff was built up prior to. We had a bunch of movies that led up to this. There's nothing that leads up to this, sort of. Yeah, Far From Home, it was really the first time they even put it on the table, and that was a totally different scale than what's yeah. being rumored here. Yeah. 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 Just to bring it back, who knows? If, if, if um, something about... Of Spider-Man shows up in in, in uh, WandaVision. Uh, that's uh, I didn't. It's funny. I didn't put Tom Holland on that list, but I guess Spider. I guess Spider-Man would qualify as a Luke Skywalker level. Yes, candidate. that would be interesting. It's a good point. Given that Cumberbatch is in both, we know. So, yeah, and if they, I guess they would. It would make sense if this is what they're leading towards anyway, right? That they tease us with this possibility. I don't know, man, but I hope I hope they really take their time with this, man, because I, I want this story fully fleshed out and, and told really well. And when with him saying New Spidey is super ambitious. Well, he said most ambitious superhero film ever made, which I hate it when people talk like that. You I know? Agree, like, with you. <laughs> agree with you. It always like said, you, it always you said hyping you it that. up too much, yo. Yes. It's like now if it's if it's not what you thought it would be in terms of hypeness and like oh my god, then you're setting yourself up. You're setting up people to be disappointed, and you know I'd rather you just don't say nothing at all. But let's see, man. I I'm pretty sure you thought the same thing. 
I did. It, it definitely made me nervous that they were going to go with a two-packed approach. I also thought his response to the Toby and Andrew question was almost too much of a denial. <laughs> like he was like, "Oh, it's news to me." He's like, "I just act opposite a tennis ball," and then I'm like, "Oh, that's who the tennis ball was." Yeah, like, man, yeah. that almost sounds kind of like you're really working hard not to say <laughs> that they're in this. And like, I, you know, I, and to your point. I don't like when people talk in hyper when actors and directors talk in hyperbole like that. Mm. It usually, almost, quite honestly, puts me on alert that something's going to be bad or something's going to be disappointing because they're trying to like. And it's like you don't need to hype Spider-Man three. Like your first two movies were good. Yeah. Everyone likes you as Peter Parker. Yeah. You don't need to sell this. Exactly. You don't. You don't. But I don't know, man. I I hope I, I hope it isn't what it, what what I think it is, and I hope it's fleshed out, and I hope this is the story is told the way it should be, and not just packed in, man, because it'll be very disappointing for me, and and I think quite a few fans, probably not some fans that just want to see it, sure, right? They want to just see it, but I want a, a fully fleshed out story, the way they did Infinity War, the way they did Endgame. Uh, that's what I would like to see well they don't have i mean they don't have and kevin feige said they don't have a then the avengers does not exist right now in the mcu right the individual avengers characters we have the avengers as a team up arc storyline doesn't exist so if they want to put it across effectively put it in one or two of these spider-man doctor strange we're like pick your character to embody the avengers series that's fine that's great but you don't need to do that in one move yeah of course yeah of course let's see what happens man be on alert when 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 tom holland speaks man just be on alert <laughs> um so i don't know if it's confirmed or it's just a rumor that Superman will not show up in the Shazam sequel. I'm going to say it's confirmed because it's the director who tweeted it. Ah, okay. David Samuels. So I'm going to say that's about as official as we're going to get. I actually thought it was interesting that he spilled the beans on saying Cavill was supposed to be in the first one. Ah, that okay. didn't make it to the yeah. finish line. So. This begs the question. For me anyway regarding henry cavill and his run as superman nothing's been written nothing's been announced the only thing the only time we're going to see henry cavill as superman is in right now in the foreseeable future is Zack snyder's justice league after this do you see henry cavill as Superman in various films of his own and in others. Do you see that happening? Because there's nothing really happening outside of the Justice League. What do you think? I think it's getting less and less likely. I mean, it felt like we had a hot rumor a couple months ago that he was going to re-sign uh, and it was going to be a Man of Steel sequel. I personally thought the best idea I heard was an HBO Max series on Superman with him. That was the single best idea I've heard put forward. If the character's not working on the big screen, I think it's a perfect one to rehabilitate on the small screen. But I think it's getting less and less likely. And I don't know if that's because of the studio, because of the actor, because of both. And I gotta be honest, you know, I, let's not let's not minimize the impact of Zack Snyder's Justice League in this. If that is well received and Cavill in the black suit and whatever expanded role he has in that is received well, that will probably have an impact as to whether the studio wants him to continue to play the role if they haven't signed him already. Yeah. I mean, if it's not well received, it was rated R the other day. I don't think that's a surprise. Yeah. Um, but if it's not an improvement and people walk away kind of feeling disappointed or unfulfilled after all of the hype, I think the odds imp the odds go up that Warner Brothers looks to move on and recast yeah. the role. I mean, yeah. at this point, quite honestly, the other thing too is like, the earliest that Cavill could be back in the suit playing the part, he's going to be like 40 years old, which is 10 years older than when he started, you know, 10 years older than when he was first cast. Like that is a different Superman. It's not that you can't write around a 40 year old Superman. There's yeah. plenty of comics about that, but he's a different Superman now. So, mm -hmm. you know, 
Yeah, I think it's, it, I think it's yeah, I don't know where you, where would you put the odds? I think right now it's probably like 25 to 33% that he comes back, like one in four to one in three, and it's probably going down. To me, it would have to, because we've spoken about his character as Superman and how he would transition into being this different type of Superman. So if he's going to be in Superman, how are you going to tell this story? You know, is it going to be an all in one film? How, you know, it's like the time is running out for them to flesh out that idea. Uh, I don't, I, I'm with you. I don't think this is less likely uh, uh, this happening because yes, he's, he's getting older. He has the Witcher coming up. He's who knows what else he may sign up for. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure he still wants to do it. Are you? I'm not totally sold on that. Like, I you almost feel like... He wants to do it? I'm just like, The Witcher's been a big hit. So he has a hit. If he gets Bond, you think he really wants to oh, be hell no. on top over. of that? Hell no, it's over. Okay. If he so gets I, Bond, it's over. Okay. So I, that's my thought is that he probably is trying to keep his options open and he probably prefers Bond at this point, to be frank. That would be interesting if he's Bond. I'd rather... Mo I'm, I'm more interested in seeing him as bond than i am in superman although i will to my grave will say that if he if he winds up not playing the character again that is one that could have worked in different hands and i will oh, yeah. always feel like we got cheated out of seeing his full potential with the character i'll always regret that we didn't get more but. speaking of zach <laughs> Zack Snyder tweeted out another tweet, uh, a visual of the Joker holding a card. Sort of. We got the card. We kind of saw the Joker. Yeah. He looked very similar to Jokers that we've seen in the past. He looked less like the Leto Joker from Suicide Squad, actually. And more, more like, like Joaquin the... Phoenix. Yes. Type, and almost a little bit like uh, Heath Ledger's yep. um, Joker. I'm not impressed. I don't care really about none of it pretty much. I, I don't, I, nothing that he tweets is exciting for me. We already they, know the character's only in the movie for like, it's he's supposedly part of one almost anthology scene, which is like two minutes long at the top. So he's not really, he's not really a factor in this. I, I, I don't get people's excitement over this. I really don't. I really don't. Um, but I mean, he's going to keep doing that and he's going to, you know, get his fan base excited for this film. I'm again, March 18th. I'm looking forward to that day because again, that is judgment day. Um, Hen Harry Lennox has, uh, in an interview, he was talking about getting the people that were for releasing the Snyder Cut and getting them to make a rally. They want he wants the people to rally uh, for getting a Martian Manhunter film done. I'm not listen. What for? Sell some Oreo cookies. <laughs> sell, some, sell some firewood, charcoal. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me. Character's not big enough. No. And if they wanted to make it dope, he should have been in it from the beginning. He should have been that character getting the Justice League together. Mm-hmm but they missed and listen i knew we knew about this harry lennox martian manhunter a long time ago because we've seen pictures years ago of him in the special effects suit but it just never showed up on screen and i'm pretty sure most likely it will show up in here i'm pretty sure we'll see that here now let me let me let me throw something at you so what about Martian Manhunter as an HBO Max series? Sort of a man, a man who changes identities, 
across multiple worlds, could that work? I don't think the character is big enough to anchor a film. It's not famous no. enough. It's not, I just don't, we know it, but like as a standalone, I don't think he's meant to be front and center. What about as a series? As a series, I'm cool with it if it leads to something bigger. Okay. If it leads to him working with Batman and Superman and all those things. But if, as of now, I just don't see that happening. And just to, and to do it just to do it doesn't make any sense to me. I'd probably see a few episodes. I'll probably see it. I'll probably watch it. But I'm not looking forward to anything else after that. I think the tough thing from a Harry Lennox perspective and who's a quality actor is yeah, that definitely. You know, if you look at what Marvel's doing with Moon Knight, the concept of Moon Knight is it's the same guy changing his personality and his look. So Oscar Isaac gets to flex his acting chops and be all the character. Martian Manhunter is a shapeshifter. Yeah. So Harry Lennox can't really be the Manhunter and the shifted character, which I think makes it tough because you're then you're constantly casting new actors to be yeah. the alter ego that he changes into. So yeah. that's why I said that's why I asked you, could this work as a show? Because I don't know that we have any precedent for a show like that no. working in like a TV forum. No. Plenty of identity and changes, stuff like that, quantum leap, all this sort of stuff. We we've never seen like an outright, hey, there's 12 actors in the season who are gonna play the lead in each episode because the character's gonna shape shift. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't see it working. It's, I'm curious to see how they would do it, obviously, right? Um, I'm pretty sure visually it probably would look dope and all that, but the story, where did this go? For me, it's all, it's all about where does this go? You know, and wh how long are we seeing this for a meaning? Are we going to get one or two season? And after that, where does this go? I just don't want to see the Marsh. Mar I've never seen the Martian Manhunter like in the animated series, just him. He's always that guy that um, yeah. sort of uh, poses questions to the others to think about. And so I don't know if he's like the, like the moral compass of them all, but he, he's certainly the glue. Yeah, I think that's a good description because even Justice League Unlimited and, and the original Justice League cartoon ra rarely put him front and center, even though like in the pilot, he obviously is the reason they kind of ultimately get together. But yeah. there are very few episodes that were all about the Manhunter. Whereas most of the characters had at least one show that was yeah. really all about them. And when he was up to bat, he was dope. Yeah. But a whole show, no. Um... But yeah, once again, thank you again for joining us on the show. Um, Brian, any last words? No, can't wait for episode, can't wait for episode six. And it's just, just fun to be along for the ride and fun to be talking about these Easter eggs now. Cause yeah. I mean, whether or not we'll see where the Evan Peters storyline goes, but even yeah. though we had heard it rumored, it was still a big deal to just see it put on screen and feel like we were officially touching on the Fox acquired characters for the first time. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing wh where this goes, man. Episode nine can't come soon enough, it seems, <laughs> right? To get this whole thing unraveled and, and and then get that tease of what's next with Doctor Strange 2 and possibly we, with even Spider-Man. Well, the so, episodes are getting longer, too. This one was closer to 40 minutes. So you kind of think, like, the last three episodes might feel like a movie. Like we kind of that'll add up yeah. to about two hours. That might feel like you're in a in a feature film at that point. And I, when I was watching it, it, it looks great, yo. It looks mm -hmm. like you could put it in the theater, right? Yeah, sure. it, it, it's it's top notch, man. And I'm glad that they're uh, back at it again, and people are buzzing about because after each episode, people can just can't can't help themselves but go online and go crazy and start talking about this stuff. And it's hard on Friday when I'm looking through my Instagram and stuff, and I'm. <laughs> I saw a picture of the dude and I'm like, oh man. But <laughs> I already knew it was happening, but it was it was like, damn, I wish I would have just seen it. But so thank you once again. We'll see you next week. Have a good morning, have a good afternoon, and have a good evening. Later, Brian. <laughs>